side. I think we're ready, Sam, whenever you are. Let us know. Ten seconds? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm telling her to tell her count on TV, too. So why don't you give us 30 seconds after this one? That way I can tell our uh, count on TV. About 30 seconds. where teachers care for students and encourage them to explore their full potential with confidence and enthusiasm. At Cal Allen, our extracurricular activities frequently compete at the state level. And thanks to our dedicated faculty and staff and our innovative use of technology in the classroom, we rank number one academically in all of South Texas. Just off of Interstate 37 and a short 20-minute drive from downtown Corpus Christi, come join us at Cal Allen, where winning is a tradition. All right, football fans, welcome to Friday Night Football, coming to you from Beeville, Texas, right up the road on 181 on a beautiful Friday night where the Wildcats will take on the Beeville Trojans in a big district matchup as we uh, approach the end of the season. We have both teams lined up on the field. The national anthem is being played, and you could not ask for a most, uh, more beautiful night. To my left, i got Coach Mark Medina. To our very far left is our statistician, Coach Mike Brotherton. Coach Medina, welcome to the show. Oh, glad, glad I'm back. I'll tell you what, it's a great night. Clear skies coming up here, so that's a good sign. Well, the last two weeks, as you know, <laughs> we've had our games postponed. So we were joking before the game that we're hoping to get this game in on a Friday night. As a beautiful temperature, 70 degrees here in Beeville, Texas. Wind blowing out of the north, northwest at 2 miles per hour. About a 45-minute drive, you come up 37, catch over to 181. And again, just a, a beautiful complex here at Trojan Stadium, home of the Beeville Trojans. HUD coach is a friend of ours that we've been very familiar with, is Chris Sosa, who has the reins right. for these Beeville Trojans. He's been in South Texas for a long time. I did a bunch of different places, but I guess most recently was Medina Valley, and then before that was uh, Alice, Texas, where, he's, where he grew up from. Brings in the Trojans at a four and four record. They come in with a district record of, of uh, three and one. Last week they won over Toloso Midway, 35 to zero. I'm sorry, two and one in district play. Uh, win last week over the uh, Toloso Midway Warriors, 35 to zero. Overall, they have a four and four record, but the losses they've had have been to some very tough competition. Flower Bluff, Victoria West, Somerset, just uh, you know, those are three of their losses. And their district loss was to Port Lavaca, Calhoun. Correct. You know, so again, the losses that they've come in against have been some quality programs. And you look for a good matchup. Anytime, again, you play these Wildcats, you're going to get the best out of everybody. Look for that tonight from these uh, Beeville Trojans. This is a huge game tonight. I mean, Cal Allen coming in 3-0, and and then you got Beeville at 2-1. and I mean, Beeville needs a big win tonight. Absolutely. Again, this is, you know, uh, week nine of the season next week is the uh, season finale will be against the uh, Port Lavaca Calhoun Sand Crabs. But tonight, it's the Beeville Trojans. Burn orange and white in front of us. We are on the home side looking across the field to the Cal Allen Wildcats. We are about seven minutes away from kickoff on a beautiful Friday night. We want to thank everybody for being with us on a Friday night. We're going to take a break. We're on 1400 KUNO and Cal Allen TV. We'll be back after these words. Ah, my bad. I'll get you. I'll get it corrected here. I thought I was seeing things. I said, "God, lady looks just like Cindy." <laughs> well, 
Well, there's some of our Italian ones. Go on. The same thing with you. We did with you. Like, so I'm looking, I'm like, oh, looks like a Marine shirt. <laughs> A lot of our family and friends are still here. Okay, gonna have to <clears throat> see if we can get the uh, captains across the field. All right, welcome back to Friday Night Football. Coming to you from Beeville Stadium, Beville, home of the Beeville Trojans, as we get ready for tonight's matchup. Again, tonight's game is on 1360 KKTX, also being broadcast on Cal Island TV. Let your family, friends know they want to watch the game. All they got to do is go to YouTube, do uh, get on the search engine, Cal Island TV, and you can watch from the comfort of your own home, at work, on your cell phone, Wherever you're at, I want to thank uh, Coach Lamb and the uh, student body for helping us out with Cal Allen TV. We also want to thank Beeville, the administration, for allowing us to broadcast the game tonight for the uh, Wildcats. The captains for the Beeville Trojans tonight. Uh, number seven, Bryce Foster. Number 14, Victor Gonzalez, the quarterback. Number 52, Matthew Salinas. And number 54, Eduardo Mendez. For the Cal Allen Wildcats will be number five, Bryce Burnett. Number 44 is Colton Calloway. Number 69 is Jaden Rodriguez, and number 78 is Curtis Brooks. Wildcats wearing the traveling uniforms, white shirts, maroon pants, maroon numerals, white headgear with the Cats logo across the helmet. Beaver, the home team tonight, wearing burnt orange shirts, burnt orange pants, white numerals, white headgear, and it looks like the Trojan emblem, very similar to the USC emblem on the side of their helmet. Flag looks like dripping straight down. Not much wind to be a factor tonight, or at least not right now. Both teams will be featuring the running game tonight. Bryce Burnett is your quarterback again tonight. We have mentioned to you last week that uh, Hickman was not wearing the boot anymore, but opting to give him another week of rest as we get ready again for the final stretch of the season. Port Lavaca next week and then into Bay District. Referee talking to Coach, um, I'm sorry, to uh, Bryce Burnett. Burnett, looks like he's going to select the uh, end zone to the, what is that? That would be west, I guess. No, yep. east. east. That would be east. east. So, it looks like the Cal Wildcats won the toss. They divert to the second half. The Beeville Trojans will receive the ball to the end zone to our right-hand side. That would be the west end zone. The Wildcats will defend the east end zone to our left. Getting ready for tonight's matchup. I want to thank everybody for being with us on a Friday night. Beautiful Friday night. Again, I'm Mike Guerrero. To my left is Coach Mark Medina. Our statistician tonight is Coach Brotherton. Our Twitter feed tonight brought to you by Cindy Powell. We wait for the uh, players to come onto the field. Beville yeah. will be on the right-hand side. It will be 1-21. and 21. Number one I have is Isaiah Gonzalez. Number 21 is Darian Pettis. They'll stand at about their 10-yard line. Kicking off for the Wildcats, number 64 will be Jordan King. He'll tee it up at the 40-yard line. No crowd mic tonight. We are in a press box. Well, sounds like we're in a bubble, so if you get a little bit of an echo, we apologize. Jordan King, right-footed kicker, approaches. High kick. This one will be taken at the 15-yard line. Coming to the near side is the return man, quickly brought down. By number one, Nathan Salinas. On the return, number five is Caleb Washington. Looks like it put it. Beaver's going to start shop at the 25-yard line. They'll, they should be coming out in the familiar uh, slot T formation. They rely on them uniforms for the deception. Try to hide that ball, and they do a great job. That's one of the things Coach Sosa Teaches. They come up to the line of the scrimmage very quick. Quarterback keeper is going to keep it. Cade Wood, number six, comes up to make the tackle. No gain on the play for the quarterback, number 14, 
is Gonzalez. Victor Gonzalez, six foot, 185 pound senior, tried the left side, maybe a half yard on the play, but Beagle quick to the line of scrimmage and quick on the snap. I think that's as fast as we've seen the team all year get to the line of scrimmage. See if they keep that up all night, though. Gonzalez breaks the huddle, comes up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine for the Trojans. Sweet and to the right. To number one, trying to go on the right side. That's Isaiah Gonzalez. Gonzalez, maybe a yard on the play. We'll call it third down and eight for the Trojans. Brought down by Jane Rodriguez, number 69, the left defensive tackle for the Wildcats. A nose guard will be Hinojosa, and then right tackle. Want to make sure. Looks like we got all the familiar faces. Epi Hinojosa, nose guard. Yeah, Ernest Hinojosa. Ernest, I'm sorry. Ernest Hinojosa. And Grant Taylor at the right defensive tackle. Shotgun formation for the Trojans. They split two men out to the near side. Wide receiver motions across the line. Got pressure from Callaway. Trying to dump it off. A little screen play. Pass intended for number four, and it's going to drop incomplete. Callaway with the pressure on Hinojosa. Both, both Grant Taylor and Epi Hinojosa. I mean, I'm sorry. See, keep saying Ernest. Ernest Hinojosa did a good job reading that screen. Jane Hinojosa was right in the quarterback's face. Skyler Rubio will drop back inside his 40-yard line. Number eight, I'm sorry, 14, Victor Gonzalez also acts as a punter for Beeville. They line up in a four-wide receiver set. Trying Fourth to draw. down and eight for the uh, Trojans now. The quarterback... Will drop back 15 yards. Snap on the way. Right-footed punter. Low punt. Rubio will have pick a chance up, for a return. Up, pick it up. Rubio picks it up at the 30. Coming on the near side. Has a blocker. Tries to step on a dime. Cuts it outside. But he's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 47-yard line. 10 minutes and 13 seconds. Wildcats will take over. First down and 10. They're going to start the drive. At the 48-yard line. Rio finally brought down by Isaiah Gonzalez, number one, for the Trojans. Burnett will bring the Wildcats on the field. Wildcats are going to show their spread formation. Wide out split to each side. Hinojosa, the running back to the right of Burnett. Low snap. Burnett on the keeper. Burnett right up the middle. Burnett has some room. Burnett will pick up about 11 yards on the play. Inside the 40 to the 39-yard line, that'll be enough to move the chains. Great blocking on that offensive line, especially the right side that time. Cole Hobbs, the center. Evan Eden, number 76. And Daniel Garcia, number 66. Left guard is Reed Balthrop, number 54. And Curtis Brooks, the left tackle, number 78. Split up top, number 13 is Vecchio Salinas. Wide out to the near side. Shotgun formation. Fake it to Hinojosa. Going downfield. Going to... Hit his receiver, unable to catch it on the first half, but he brings it in. It's number four, Cody Newell, on the reception for the Wildcats at the 31-yard line. So a pickup about seven yards on the play. We'll call it second down and three. Newell was knocked out of bounds by number 32, Cameron Vega. Wildcats, same formation. Single wide out, split up top. Empty backfield. Salinas, wide out to the near side. Hinojosa motions across the line of scrimmage. Steps on a dime. Cuts it upfield. Goes upfield. He'll have enough of the first to the 25-yard line. Finally brought down by number seven for the uh, Beeville Trojans. That's going to be Bryce Foster on the tackle. Bryce Foster is the leading tackler for the Trojans. He's got 85 tackles. Well, let's make that 86 so far. Defensively for the uh, Trojans, defensive tackles Jackson Hughes. Jeremy Levine, your defensive end is R.V. Vasquez and Nip, Nick Lampkin. Rubio motions across the line of scrimmage. Quarterback keeper again, Burnett, tries to get away from a tackle. Brought down at the 25. Minimal gain on the play. We'll call it half a yard, second down, and a long nine. Brought down by number 78, Jeremy Levine. Your linebackers for the Trojans, number eight is Eduardo Bracco. Number seven, Bryce Foster, and number 21 is Darian Pettis. Wildcats breaking the huddle quick. Coming up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine, handoff to Carpinello. Carpinello around the right side, has a 20. Carpinello has a 15, pushed out of bounds. Looks to be at about the 11 
yard line. It's going to be enough for the first down, and the chains will move. Nice run there by Carpinello. Carpinello was knocked out of bounds by number seven, Bryce Foster. Foster early on with two early tackles. Secondary for the Trojans, number five is Caleb Washington, and number 24, Joshua Arroyos. Your safeties, number three, Gavin Corpus, and number 14, Victor Gonzalez. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Just outside the 10-yard line. Happy Anahosa with the carry. Breaks a tackle inside the five. Brought down at the four-yard line. Had a big hole on the left side. Trojans did a nice job of coming up and filling the hole. Both Bryce Foster and number eight, Edward Braco, on the tackle. Trojans. And I'd like to remind everybody you can listen to tonight's game on iHeartRadio, Cats Eye Radio, or you can watch live on Cal Island TV. Second down, we'll call it three. Hand off Hinojosa. The end zone. Three-yard touchdown run for Epi Hinojosa. And the Wildcats on the board with 749 here in this opening quarter. Huge hole opened up by the offensive line for Cal Allen. Point after coming up from King. Salinas will wait for the snap. Again, win not a factor tonight. King with a strong leg kick. This one is going to be wide right, unsuccessful. Seven minutes, 49 seconds. Wildcat six, Trojans zero. We'll be back on Cal Allen TV and 1360 KKTX. This quarter's player profile is brought to you by Oh Goody Designs and Events. Yeah, yeah. Jordan King, high kick, bounces to muff by the return man, running backwards, trying to get away, crosses the field, and he gets a nice return to get out of trouble, but he's going to only come out to about the 13-yard line. And right off the bat, Coach, that was just not a good return by the Trojans. They muffed it. Initially, ball went over his head, tried to make something happen, but went backwards on that one. Tell you what, he went, ran around a few defenders and, and made a good cut, but – Good thing Alex Kittigua got down there in a hurry. He made a great tackle, one-on-one. -on -one. Beaver will start the drive. First down and 10. They're going to start at the 13-yard line. Quarterback, number 14, is Victor Gonzalez. Gonzalez hands it off to his running back, and he's going to be met in the backfield. I believe that's uh, number one, he Isaiah Gonzalez, on the carry for the Trojans, and he's going to maybe get to the line of scrimmage. Or they'll give him... Forward progress. He was brought down by number one of Cal Allen, Ethan Salinas, and Grant Taylor, number 55. We're going to give him about two-yard gain on the play, Coach, from the 13 to the well, – a yard, 13 to the 14. So second down and nine for the Beeville Trojans. Hanahosa turns around, hands it off to number 21. Darian Pettis trying to go around the outside, and he's going to be brought down by Gonzalez in the backfield. Going to lose about two yards on the play. It's going to bring up third down and 11. William Burst did a great job. He, he shot through the hole and got his arms wrapped around uh, number one, and then Gonzalez came in and finished him off from the side. Clock rolling, six minutes, 37 seconds. Coming to you from Beeville, Texas, home of the A.C. Jones Trojans. Cal Allen defense looking great tonight so far. Head coach Chris Sosa. His son, the offensive coordinator. Four wide receivers. Oh, Gonzalez go rolling to his right. Pressure from Callaway. Gets away from Callaway. Now we'll step up. He's got a man open at the uh, 30, at the 45-yard line. That's number 12, Matthew Romeo Casas. Finally brought down 
in Wildcat tor uh, territory. And that was just a uh, breakup in coverage, Coach, to say the least. They thought Callaway had him at about the goal line. But number 14, Victor Gonzalez did a nice job of extending the play and finding a wide open receiver at about the 45 yard line. Well, all the routes were run and it looks like, you know, when they start doing the scramble routes, the receiver did a good job going to the middle of the field, finding an open spot for Gonzalez to hit him. First down and 10 for the Trojans inside Wildcat territory. Gonzalez fakes it to uh, Bearfield. Now he's gonna take a shot downfield, trying to hit his wide receiver. Got behind Cade Wood, number 21, is Darian Pettis. But Gonzalez with a strong arm. Coach, he threw that right about 50 yards to the goal line. Well, he threw it from the, like the five-yard line to the 45 on our side. That was 50 yards in the air to get that first down. Clock stops, five minutes and 40 seconds. Wildcat fans across the field from us. Beeville fans in front of us. Burn orange and white. Maroon and white across the field. Second down and 10, Hinojosa lines up under center. Rolling to his uh, left, now he's going to roll back to his right, trying to set up a little dump-off pass, and it's going to drop incomplete. Coach, the only man down there. There should have been a that legal be a man flag. downfield. There's, there's no receiver in sight. Well, not only that, but that was number 54. <laughs> Eduardo Mendez, who... Was about 10 yards downfield for what I mean, he, dropped incomplete. Should have been a, at least an illegal man downfield. It was a good pass because it had hit 54 right in the hands, but he, he pulled his hands back. So he, if he'd have touched it, it would have been a legal receiver. Bearfield checks out number nine. Trojans again, third down and 10. They'll go with four wide receivers. Trips left. Quads left with the receiver. A little dump off to number four. Ball comes up in the air, and it's going to be picked off by the uh, Wildcats. Great job. Big hit from the defender. The ball went up in the air. And, Coach, is that number Ethan, 55? Or is Ethan it? Salinas was the one that knocked the ball loose, and then Koval caught it in the air. Big hit by the Wildcat defense. Ball popped up in the air, and it was picked off in the air by the Wildcats, and they're going to get the ball just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line with five minutes and 24 seconds on the fumble play by the Trojans. We have our first turnover of the night. Shotgun formation for the uh, Wildcats. Burnett looking downfield, has pressure, steps up in the pocket. Now going downfield, looking for his wide receiver, has Carpinello. Carpinello down the sideline, he's touchdown. gonna take it in. 51 yard touchdown pass from Burnett to Carpinello. Referees are conferring, but I don't, I, don't, I don't see a flag. I'm looking for yellow laundry. I don't see anything on the field. Carpinello on the reception from Burnett. We're going to wait to see what the referees are talking about. I don't see yellow laundry, but there must be a... Is that an illegal formation for the Wildcats? Is that what they're calling? Came from the uh, side judge across the field. So the penalties. That's the first big penalty of the night. Negate the uh, would be touchdown from Carpinello receiving from Burnett. And that's going to bring us back to the 44 yard line. Coach, that had to be the only thing I could see. Well, a strange call from the uh, officiating crew here. That's going to be Hanahosa. Hanahosa on the carry. Cuts back up field. Hinojosa will pick up about 10 yards on the play to the 44-yard uh, line of the Trojans. Tell you what, and I know it's hard when you're down there running the football and you see all these defensive jerseys in your face, but if he'd have made a cut to the right, he'd have been gone. There was Coach, no one outside of the force, man. And Coach, again, you have a seven-man crew tonight, something we normally don't see from these officiating crews. Luke Medina Second in motion. Down, playing coming up. Let's Wide go. open. Gonna be Come on, Tagle. Tagle, number 33 on the reception. The Tagle zone. now. Tagle's going to walk it in. 44 yards from Look for a Burnett flag. to Tagle. 
I don't see anything. I don't see it as well. So we're going to call this one with four minutes and 14 seconds. 44-yard touchdown pass from Bryce Burnett to number 33, Nate Tagle. You know, that's a busted coverage because there's no one anywhere near Tagle that time. Wildcats, after the failed extra point, should be going for two here. Looks like the offense will stay on the field. Waiting for the officials to start the, uh, the play clock. He picked up the flag. So there was a flag on the field. I'm sure it was against wow. Beeville. Waved it off. So the extra point coming up. Wildcats will go for the two-point conversion. Burnett under center. He's going to turn around, fake it to Hinojosa. Burnett's going to keep it. Burnett's going to try to find the pylon. I don't know if he got in. There must have reached the ball across the pylon, Coach, for the touchdown. Stretch that right arm out to get across the goal line. His body went out of bounds at about the half yard line, but the ball able to cross the pylon. Four minutes, 14 seconds. Cal Allen, 14. Beeville Trojans, zero. We'll be back after this break on 1360 KKTX. 30 seconds, Sam. 30 seconds. Ball went across the goal line. Have to open that door a little bit. Oh, it's hot. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know how no, y'all guys. No, I'm hot. Jordan King with the kick taken by Washington. Looked like Washington had went down on a knee on that yeah. one, and they are going to pick that up. Washington, when he fielded the uh, return, dropped down on the left knee, and that's going to give the Trojans. The ball at the 25-yard uh, line, four minutes and nine seconds remaining in this quarter. And, Coach, Wildcats with a 14-0 lead early in the game, working on the passing game. No, they look good. I mean, we've had wide-open receivers. Tell you what, the defense, I think I jinxed the defense when I said they were just playing great tonight, and all of a sudden, man runs loose on a scramble route. First down and 10 for the uh, quarterback, Gonzalez, third offensive possession for the uh, Trojans. Three and out. Of, oops, now we got a flag from the back judge. Hope we don't have a flag fest tonight. <laughs> Starting to look that way. Now he waves it off. That's a second flag waved off by the referee maybe tonight. Just, maybe he's got loose pockets. <laughs> got a hole in his pocket, it looks like. Four minutes and nine seconds. Motion across the line of scrimmage. Gonzalez hands it off to his running back, Bearfield. Bearfield going upfield, going to be brought down at about the 32-yard line. Bearfield is the leading rusher for the uh, Beeville Trojans. He'll pick up about seven yards on the play. We'll call it second down and three. Callan Wildcats, and you're all familiar, 50 defense. Nose guard, two tackles, two inside backers, two outside backers. Gonzalez brings the Trojans up to the line of scrimmage. Motion across, handoff again to Bearfield. Going upfield, Bearfield. Close. Up to the 35-yard uh, line. It's going to be close to a first down. He got it. And that's going to be enough to move the chains. First, first down of the night for the uh, Beeville Trojans. Both carries by their running back, number nine, Trey Bearfield. Got him listed at six foot, 170 pounds, senior running back for the Beeville Trojans. Quickly to the line. Toss sweep, going to the right side, number one. Trying to get outside, not going to get around the corner. Isaiah Gonzalez took the pitch from Gonzalez, and he's brought down. At the line of scrimmage. Look at he's brought down by number 69, Jaden Rodriguez. And number 41, William Birch. 
Number six, Colin Gomez brings the play from the sideline. 25, Kate Elder will check out. Second down, we'll call it nine to go. Gonzalez to the line of scrimmage. Takes to Bearfield, dropping back, looking for his wide out. This one's going to be picked off. Kitaguan, number 22, has a 35, has a 30, get it, get it. has blockers in front of him. Kitaguan finally brought down at the 10 yard line. Wildcats with their second turnover of the night. This one, number 22, Kitaguan on the interception. Gonzalez had a man open. He tried to hit him, and Kitaguan did a great job of jumping that pass route. Coming up with that intersection, then even a better run return, almost getting into the end zone. Did a nice job. Had some blockers in front of him. I thought he was going to take him. it in. We got a penalty blocking below the waist. Going to bring the ball back. Still a first down for the Wildcats. I think we've had five penalties Too many tonight. Too early. Two of them have been waved off. We're not out of the first quarter yet. Two minutes and 19 seconds remaining here in the quarter. And instead of being first down and goal from the 10, it's going to bring us back to the 40-yard line. So you're right, Coach. Number 14, Gonzalez now. Coming into play safety going, for the uh, Trojans. It's tough when you're going two ways and be the quarterback. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Burnett on the quarterback keeper. Burnett spins around, breaks the tackle, still spinning. He's going to lunge forward to about the 36-yard line. Well, that was a hard five yards right there by Burnett. Second down, we're going to call it six to go. Beckill split wide up top. Salinas so wide out to your near side. Empty backfield for Burnett. Hinojosa in the slot. Motions across. Takes a handoff. Goes around the left side. Has the blocker. Hinojosa picks up about 10 yards. He's going to have enough for the first down at the 24-yard line. Good piece of run. And finally brought down by number 24, Joshua Arroyo for the Trojans. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Wide receivers, one split to each side. Take to number 24, Burnett going downfield, has Salinas. Broken up at the last minute by number 32, Cameron Vega, coming across and breaking it up at the last second. That pass was intended for number Burnett. The only chance he had to get it because he because a uh, defensive man jumped it good. Sleeves would have had to come back to the ball and jump up in the air and try and get it before it reached the defensive man. Second down and 10 after the incomplete. Wildcats 14-0. Option to the Burnett, right. Burnett, quarterback keeper. Right side, Burnett breaking tackles. Burnett at the 10. Walk the dog. Bryce Burnett 25 yards into the end zone for the Cal Allen Wildcats. That was all Bryce, Coach. He side broke a couple of tackles and walked it into the end zone from about 10 yards out with 101 left to go in this game. The 25-yard run by the quarterback, number five, Bryce Burnett. I believe that's the first time they've run the 18 option to the right side. It broke open wide open for the quarterback to keep the ball. King with a point after. This one through the uprights. One minute, one second left in the first quarter. Cal Allen 21, Beeville 0. We'll be back on Cal Allen TV at 1360 KKTX. We're back on track, 21-0. Yes. I'm trying to check the update on the game. Did they start yet? We should have already it should started. be about the second inning at yeah, least. Yeah, second or third maybe. Zero, zero, bottom of the second. Still early. King to kick off. 
High end over end kick. This one's going to be taken at the 24 yard line by the uh, return man of the Trojans. Goes upfield to the uh, 30 yard line. Brought down by the uh, Wildcats special teams. The return by number 21 is Darian Pettis. Great job by number 33, Tagle, getting down on the cover that punt. I, I mean, the kickoff. Did a great job. Got a hand on him, never let go. Two turnovers here in the first quarter. Or the uh, Beeville Trojans has really given the short field to the uh, Wildcats. One of them an interception by Kittigua. The other a hard hit by the defender. Ball went up in the air. The defense able to recover the uh, fumble. Handoff. Looks like Bearfield on the carry. Met by Callaway, number 44, at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if he got any yardage at all. Maybe lost the length of the ball, what it looks like. It's going to be just touching the nose of the 30-yard uh, line. Wasn't very much. Play clock down to 23. Pl uh, scoreboard, about a two-second differential from play clock to scoreboard. Shotgun formation. Gonzalez looking. Has pressure. Now wants to dump it off in the far flat. It's going to drop incomplete. Pass intended to number nine, Bearfield. Pressure again on Gonzalez, not giving him much time. It's going to bring up a third down and 10 for the Beeville Trojans. Grant Grant Taylor and uh, both rush the passer. You know, when you got to hurry, you're not going to be too accurate. Coach, I was trying to think back the last time that Cal Allen played Beeville on their home field, and I, I can't think of when that game would have been. I don't know if Coach Brotherton no, no, can think back, but I think we played him about five or six years ago. Gonzalez going downfield. This one through the hands of his wide receiver. Intended for number 21, Darian Battis drops incomplete. That's going to bring up a fourth down play. So you'll see Rubio check into the game, number 21. Well, that's a pass Alice really needed to connect on. Big fourth down play coming up. They'll be forced to punt. Two seconds remaining here in this uh, first quarter. Gonzalez should They're shift good. back. Yeah. There it is. He'll shift back inside his 20. Rubio stands at about his 30-yard line. Low end over end punt. It's going to take a Trojan roll now. Bounces at the 35-yard line. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. We'll switch ends on the field. You're listening to Cal Allen Wildcat Football on 1360 KKTX and Cal Allen TV. Hey everyone, are you looking for some good southern homestyle cooking? Well, look no further. Southern Charm is your one-stop shop for all your favorite foods. With a buffet that rotates entrees daily. A freshly made salad bar. And a staff so friendly they might as well be family. Southern Charm provides a safe, socially distanced place to eat that perfect, warm, home-cooked meal. Anybody know where the crew's from? Nobody looks I familiar. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they're, they're not a Corpus crew, and I can't imagine they came out of San Antonio. I'm not sure where they're from. They're not giving us a minute between breaks, I can promise you that. <laughs> Ready to go. They're going. 35 yard line. Two wide outs. Wing left. Shotgun left. Burnett brings the Wildcats back onto the field at the end of the first quarter. We've switched ends. Burnett has pressure. Ball comes loose. Still on the ground. Did Beville recover it? And they do. Burnett, a little sloppy with the ball, carrying it like a loaf of bread. Ball came loose. Number 64, Jackson Hughes, picks it up off the carpet. And Beville gets her first turnover of the night. Good field position for the Trojans. Fumble by Burnett. I 
That'll bring the offense of the Trojans onto the field. They'll have the ball on the 37-yard line of the Wildcats. Dropping back is the quarterback, trying to go on the far sideline, caught but immediately brought down. I believe that's Cade, Cade Wood, Wood number six. on the coverage. It's going to be about a seven-yard gain on the play. It's going to bring up second down and three. Not much time came off the clock on that one. No. Clock reading, 11.43. About three seconds total came off that play <laughs> from the uh, center to quarterback pass exchange to the receiver. Second down play coming up. Hand off to Bearfield. Bearfield trying to break a few tackles. Lunges upfield. He's going to get to the 14-yard line. He'll have enough for the first down. Chains will move. Brought down by William Burtz, number 41. Last week. I'm trying to remember if it was the last week. I know the last, the week before Burnett. Had trouble with the uh, pitch play tonight. Having trouble just holding on to the ball. Looked like he had gone down, had pressure, was trying to cut back, but he's had that ball kind of hanging down with one hand coach, and one of the uh, defenders for the uh, Trojans just swapped it away. Uh, it doesn't take much if you're holding it with one hand. Is that a timeout on the field? I believe. Tradition has begun. To one of the most exclusive robotics competitions. Where skill is everything. Fear is not an option. just drooping on the flagpole. No win tonight. Handoff coming to the right side. Coming up to try to make the play for the Wildcats. Good job. Looks like that's going to be number three for Cal Allen. Brody Rogers coming up from the safety position. Bringing down number one, Isaiah Gonzalez. About a two-yard gain on the play. We'll call it second down and eight. Great job by Brody Rogers. Even, for, even from that safety position, he got up there in a hurry. Clock stops with 11.07. Game nine of the season. Beeville taking a lot more time now than they were at the beginning of the game. Trojans again coming in with a two and one record in district play. Cal Allen three and zero. Oh. Handoff to number one Isaiah Gonzalez again trying the right side. This time Gonzalez is going to go backwards. The two yards they gained on the first down play brings them back. To the original line of scrimmage, third down and 10. Ernest Hinojosa, number 35, made sure the running back kept going backwards. Good job. Great tackle. Great form tackle by Ernest. Bevo really slowing down in between plays. Third down and 10. Gonzalez turns around, hands it off. Coming around the right side is number 21. Darian Pettis, and Pettis knocked out of bounds. Knocked out by number 30, Christian Gonzalez, left cornerback. Pushed out of bounds at about the 14, so about a one-yard gain on the play. And trailing by 21, look for Coach Sosa to go for it here on fourth down. Absolutely. I mean, 21-0, <clears throat> they can't afford, especially with the field position they've got right here. Gomez, Martinez, bring the play in from the sideline. Bearfield will check out. I'd say sprint pass to the left. Timeout. Taken by the Trojans. Friday night football from Beeville Stadium. 
beautiful improvements here to the stadium. This press box. not the same town that or the same field that I played on years ago, but now they have the uh, the beautiful press box elevator that brought us up. Press box looks nice. I mean, it's wall to wall glass. You great vision anywhere you're sitting. AstroTurf on the field. A little different orange, though, Coach, in the end zones than what you see on the uniforms. I don't want to call it Tennessee orange, but it's maybe like an orange Julius orange. Well, it's had I'm plenty dating. of South Texas sun. To, it, may, it might have been darker orange at one time. Well, looking over at Coach uh, Brotherton's cup, it's almost like a Whataburger orange. <laughs> but uh, beautiful field as it is. Turf field for the uh, Trojans. Gonzalez they, brings up the field. Expanded their uh, bleachers here on the home side. Nice complex for sure. Five wide receivers for the Trojans. Slot motion across the field. Gonzalez rolling to his left. Going to dump it off to his wide receiver. It's going to be caught. Tries to get into the end zone. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the three-yard line, but a great play call from Sosa. Motion man who, who went over to the trip side. Actually was uncovered, and that's got to be a linebacker covering him. There's no way linebacker could get out there. It's like uh, Eric Trevino will check in for the Trojans. Big tight end, number 82. First down and goal, quick to the line of scrimmage. They turn around, hand it off to Bearfield. Nothing Bearfield doing. hit. And may have lost <laughs> uh, half a yard on the play. It's going to bring up second down and goal from the two. I'll tell you what, when, when – Colton Calloway and William Burch meet you at the line of scrimmage at the same time, you're not going to get many yards. Play clock rolling. Eight minutes, 52 seconds. Gonzalez has the uh, Trojans huddled up at about the eight-yard line. They quickly come to the line of scrimmage. Gonzalez hands it off. Again, Bearfield coming to the near side. Bearfield. Stuffed. Sorry, that's number one. Isaiah Gonzalez stuffed after about a half yard gain on the play. It's going to bring up third down and goal for the uh, Trojans. That time, Colton Callaway and Ernest Hinojosa both met the running back at line of scrimmage. Still on the one yard line. Nick Lampkin will check in. Number six, Colin Gomez also checking in for the uh, Trojans. Look for a play-action pass here, maybe rolling out to the left once again. Third down and goal, Gonzalez under center. Gonzalez quarterback keeper. Gonzalez trying to find the end zone. Still no signal from the uh, line judge. Still waiting for the signal. Never saw the hands go up in the air, but public announcer called it a touchdown, so looks like it's going to be... An extra point for the uh, Trojans coming up. Never <laughs> well, saw either referee, the line, neither lines judge, the referee, nobody signaled touchdown on the uh, play. Scorekeeper gave him six points, so guess it's a touchdown. 7.51. Gonzalez with the uh, quarterback keeper takes it in from one yard. Eduardo Breco to attempt a point after. Left-footed kicker. Looks good. And it's through the uprights. Seven minutes, 51 seconds. Cal Allen, 21. Beville, 7. We'll be back on 1360 KKTX and Cal Allen TV. This quarter's player profile is brought to you by O oh Goody Designs and Events. I think that's got more fizz. Twenty-one-seven. Yeah, the big front pocket. Yes. William Braco to kick off for wow. the Trojans. A little squib kick. This one bounces, rolls, finally picked up by the Wildcats 
at about the 18-yard line. Carpinello on the return. Carpinello upfield to about the 29-yard line where he's going to start this drive for the Wildcats. Burnett will come back on the field, and Coach, the uh, Trojans got the uh, gift on the 37-yard line after the uh, Burnett fumble. They were able to capitalize, but it was a big fourth down, fourth and ten. They uh, you know, ran that play. They rolled out to the left, and uh, just a nice – play call by the uh, Trojans to pick up that key fourth you know, down play. Th and that, that's a huge drive and a huge score for them, even though it was a short score. I mean, th Beaver really needed that. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Bryce Burnett has Hinojosa to his left, hands it off to Hinojosa. Hinojosa lunging upfield beyond the 35. He's going to be brought down at the 36-yard line. So a gain of about seven yards on the play. Brought down by number 11. Nick Lampkin for the Trojans. Thank you. Second down play coming up. Burnett turns around, hands it off to Medina. Medina trying to get on the outside. Go Stops forward. on a dime, but Medina going to be held short of the first down. We'll see where they spot it. Looks to be at about the 30. Eight yard line, 37-38. You got to get those kids out of that habit of wanting to stop and dance when there's nowhere to go, really. Put your shoulder down, get that extra yard, and just be satisfied. William Burt's coming in. Medina will check out. Six minutes, 39 seconds remaining here before the half. Wildcats with a 21-7 lead over the Beeville Trojans. Burnett turns around. We'll hand it off. Hinojosa fighting yeah. hard, and he's going to pick up the first down. Needed a long yard, and he's going to pick up two to the 40. It'll be enough to move the chains. I was trying to see where William Birch came in. I think he might have come in at tight end. Unless he came in to be the bigger halfback. No, he's at the right tight end. Again, we mentioned Gonzalez is... Playing safety both ways for the uh, Beeville Trojans. Burnett turns around, hands it off again. Medina cuts it upfield. Spins around Medina to about the 44-yard line. Maybe a three-yard gain. We'll see where they spot it. They're going to spot it at the 43. So about a three-yard gain for Medina. Good run that time. Didn't waste any time. Didn't dance. He just spun and leaned forward. Got as many yards as he could. Good job, Luke. Offensive line for Cal Allen still doing a great job opening up some holes. Burnett takes the toss, turns around, hands it to Carpinello. Carpinello trying to get around the outside at the 40, now stops, goes upfield. Very minimal gain on the play, maybe a yard. Tell you what, Carpinello should have bought, followed all that blocking. Tell you what, the center Cole Hobbs just completely wiped out the middle linebacker, number seven. Took him to the sideline. Nobody was there. I mean, you've got to be patient. and You can't just run out of there. Let the blocking take place and follow your hole. Wing right. Burnett rolling to his right. Going to dump it off, trying to hit the far flat. Trying to connect, I believe, that's Hinojosa. It'll be a first down. Ball drops on the carpet, incomplete. Oh. Fourth down coming up, so the Trojans do a great job forcing the uh, Wildcats on a three and out after they just uh, put some points on the board, so that's a good sign for Coach Sosa and the Beeville Trojans. Well, William Burt's probably going to move from tight end to – running back that way he can attempt a rugby style kick <coughs> we're familiar to seeing dropping back to punt at about it's 32 is number 41 birch low kick this one's gonna bounce takes a couple of rolls picked up by the uh trojans number 14 that's gonna be back and safety now acting as a return man as well another good play by number 33 nate tagle getting down there making the tackle on the kick 
First down and 10. They're going to spot the ball at the 31-yard line. And a Hosa at nose guard. Grant Rodriguez each to one side of uh, Hinojosa. Gonzalez brings the Wildcats, I'm sorry, the uh, Trojans to the line of scrimmage. Fake handoff. Now they're going to pitch it. Number 21 coming around the outside. Mm. Rogers coming up. Was able to sneak underneath Rogers, but quickly to come up is Gonzalez to make the tackle. Brody Rogers needs to get, I mean, did a good job getting there quick, but he's got to stutter those feet and make a tackle. He can't just run by the ball carrier. Gain of about uh, four yards on the play. We're going to call it second down and six. Clock rolling, four minutes and 25 seconds here before halftime. Gonzalez under center. Handoff, 25. Trying to go around the left side, tripped up in the backfield. Ernest Hinojosa, number 35, is going to get credit for that tackle. Tripped him up. It looked like maybe a two-yard loss. Cade Elder on the carry for the uh, Trojans. Brought down at about the 34-yard line. So third down and seven coming up. Wildcats, 21. Trojans, seven. Approaching the uh, three-and-a-half-minute mark here before halftime. Trojans are going to go with four wide receivers. Two by two. Gun Running right. back to the uh, right side, and now a flag will come out. That should be a false start against the uh, Trojans. Now talking it over with his side judge who came all the way from across the field to talk to the uh, referee. So now they changed the call, Coach. What is that? He was going to call an illegal, um, a false start against the Trojans. The, the line judge from across the field ran all the way across and talked to the referee. And The referee and umpire were calling a false start against the Trojans. The line judge from across the field, I've never seen that, sprinted we never even 35 moved. yards to change the, the penalty. Third down and three. You, the, the official was literally starting his hand motion when the line judge stopped him. Third down play coming up. Gonzalez, pressure. Now dumps it off. This should be an intentional grounding. He's in the he, come in on. the grasp. There's no one in no one in the area. Flag should have come out for sure, no matter what. Either intentional grounding. Never got to the line of scrimmage and didn't get outside the box. And they're not saying he was in the grasp. Coach, they're not calling it. That's ridiculous. Pressure on Gonzalez. He was wrapped up, falling down, just threw the ball away, went about five yards, nowhere near the line of scrimmage. Why have referees? Wow. Sweep to the right. There's nothing there. The only thing there was Burtz. Fourth down play, and the Trojans unable to make the first down, but Coach – Golly. Uh, I hate to be critical, but the referees did everything they could on that drive to make it possible, and they just couldn't will it out. Defense comes up with a huge stop. But unbelievable. Two calls that were very questionable. The first one was a false start. The second one was he was either in the grasp or in intentional grounding. There was no receiver inside. Ne neither was called. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. 37-yard line, Burnett tosses it over to Medina. On the right side, around the corner, Medina lunging up field. He's going to have enough for the first down. Finally pushed out of bounds at about the 23, what is that, 22-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. I'm in flag shock. All I do is look for flags now. 
Good piece of running by Luke. The line judge across the field is the same line judge that called the uh, formation or illegal participation, I think it was, that took away the pass from Burnett to Carpinello. Handoff. Hinojosa, right side. Hinojosa cuts back to his right. Now brought down after about a nine-yard gain on the play inside the 15-yard uh, line to about the 13. Brought, brought, brought down by number 11, Nick Lampkin, and number 21, Darian Pettis. Second down, we're going to call it a yard to go. Play clock at 19 seconds. Scoreboard right at two minutes. Overload the left side. Toss to uh, Hinojosa. Hinojosa met in the backfield. Hey, and now hey, you get hey, a that's push. A flag. And that's, again, the lack of control. Trey Martinez, number four. Might as well throw four out of the game. He started the whole thing. And he still haven't got four out of there. You can see the taunting again. That was, again, if the officials don't control the game, it gets out of hand. If they throw four out of the game right now, they'll gain control of this game. They're letting them stay in. I don't know. Maybe he is well, gone. They're talking about it right now, but he, brought, to, he made a great play to bring down Hinojosa in the backfield. They have to do something. And he's taking his helmet off, so he might be gone. And the clock's still running. We're almost at halftime now. See what the officials are going to call here. It's not even Halloween. Uh, it's it's close. We've got a bunch of guys dressed up in costumes wearing stripes out there, that's for sure. Closer than we think. 106 before the half. The uh, young man made a, a great play to get in the backfield to bring down Hinojosa. It was going to be about a three-yard loss. After the play, he came up with some extracurricular activity, gave him a little push. And Hosa didn't take a liking to that, and that's where both teams decided to have a few words at each other. So now the referees are talking about it. And, again, the way you control this, Coach, as you mentioned, have the ejection, give both coaches a warning, and, it's, it's, and, 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 and let them stop. know that it's going to stop. It should stop right there. And that's where, now again, we saw this a couple of weeks ago in Toloso where they failed to control the game till late in the game. Both coaching staff have their players huddled up near their <laughs> sideline. So here comes a call from the official. He's picking up the flag. Line judge here talking to uh, to Coach Sosa. Looks like unsportsmanlike conduct. They're going to call it on both teams. Yeah, offset. Offsetting. So four still in. Four still in, that's so a, the play is just replay. Now that's a problem. So that again, so you have not sent a message to these kids to say, "Hey, this will not be tolerated." Number four remains in the game along with number twenty-three, but you don't want to poke the bear. You're trailing twenty-one to seven, and you're just uh, trying to get physical with a team. If it's more physical than you, is not a good idea. Burnett, toss sweep. Carpinello, right side. Carpinello trying to dance. Come on, go. And Carpinello going backwards, not the direction you want to go, trying to stop, trying to dance. Step right, step left. And, again, you can't have that. That's right now, Beaville's just sending the pressure up field, Coach. They're just coming right yeah. after this running game. That's not good. That's not good running. You don't dance, and then you decide to run backwards. That can't happen. Under a minute to play here in this second quarter. Wildcats will be facing a fourth down and 14. Jordan King not on the field. Vecchio split wide to the left. Burnett has two running backs in the backfield. Medina now goes in motion. Burnett looking downfield. Going across the middle looking for Vecchio. Got Vecchio with the catch. Vecchio with the touchdown. Beville might have woken up a sleeping bear. Trying to see, Coach, how far of a pass was that? 26. 26, 
26-yard touchdown pass from Burnett to Vacchio. Point after coming up for Jordan King. Salinas with the uh, hold. Kick, strong kick. This one through the uprights. We've played almost two quarters. 19 seconds remains. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Cal Island Wildcat Football on 1360 KKTX and Cal Island TV. Do you get hungry in the morning? Do you crave a good place to eat breakfast? Stop by Sonic for an excellent section of breakfast items like the hefty breakfast toasters, the solid breakfast burritos, or the fan favorite, the French toast sticks. This is how you Sonic. Officiating crew is not even giving close to a minute. That was 30 seconds, and they're ready to go. All right, welcome back. Looks like number 14, Aiden Culver, will take over for the uh, kicking responsibilities for the Wildcats. He tees it up at the 40-yard line. High pooch kick, and this one's going to bounce at about the 38-yard line, and it's going to roll. And be uh, recovered by the Trojans at the 33-yard line. Coach, this is a play clock here in this first half. It, it doesn't roll. It rolls. That one, no time came off the clock after the kick. Nineteen seconds remain here in the half. Beville will take over first down and ten. They're going to start the drive at the 33-yard line. They're going to come out with the trips to the near side. Single wideout split up top. Gonzalez dropping back, looking across the middle of the field. This one's going to be Incomplete. off the hands of the intended receiver. The big hit from the uh, safety. Looked like Rogers put the hit on number 12. Real good timing by Brody Rogers that time. As soon as he got his hands on the ball, Brody gave him a shot and knocked it loose. It was uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, 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 <laughs> Romeo <laughs> Casas. <laughs> Say that three times. I'm telling you. Second down and 10, 13 seconds remain here before the half. Wildcats with a 28-7 lead over the Beeville Trojans. Same formation, trips to the near side. Single wideout split up top. 21 motions across the line of scrimmage. Gonzalez now rolls to his near side. This one's going to be off the hands of number five, Caleb Washington. And that one will drop incomplete. Well, you got a feel for Gonzalez. He's trying to get his team back in this game, and he's had two receivers drop the ball right in their hands. Seven seconds. Third down play coming up. Gonzalez, six foot, 185 pound senior, trying to keep his team in this game. Third down coming up, four wide receivers. This one's going to be caught. One second. And pushed out of bounds at the 49-yard line. And there is one second remaining on this clock before we go into halftime. Well, we should be in the pre-defense, prevent defense, playing quarters deep down the field. 28-7. to seven. Last play before the half. Gonzalez rolls to his right. Coming to the near side. Now going to try to dump it off to number 12, and this one's going to bounce off the carpet. Matthew Romeo Casas never had a chance as the pressure from Callaway will take us into halftime. We've played 24 minutes from Beeville, Cal Allen 28, Beeville 7. We'll be back on 1360 KKTX and Cal Allen TV. 
Chick-fil-A is a proud sponsor of the Cal Allen Wildcats and of Cal Allen TV. Stop by today for one of their original chicken sandwiches. They don't. I mean, they're still out there. Well, Danaher's trying to talk to the referee, but I mean, what what do you say? I mean, what? I mean, I, it's got to be what, like six penalties to zero? <laughs> you don't normally see a seven man crew in high school football. You see a five man. We've seen two of them. Yeah, we saw one nights. last week as well. And they're still missing calls. Did they, did they get more? Like, they're a bunch of old guys, retired guys coming back, right? Because they can't find anything. Yeah. 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 Stephen Floyd's telling me that we beat Beeville here in 2012, 49-7. I don't know why I don't remember that. 2012? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I was in New Mexico. <laughs> they didn't have this press box back then, so I don't know if we sat across the field maybe or. In New Mexico, as soon as you scored 35 points, got 35 points ahead of the other team. It was a running clock. Oh, really? And as soon as you scored 50, the game was over, regardless of – it could be the middle of the third quarter. Looks like it's still 0-0 zero, zero in the – Uh-oh. Braves up 1-0 on the third. Bases loaded, two outs. Come on, Garcia. All right, welcome back to the halftime show. Coming to you from Beeville Trojan Stadium. North uh, side of Beeville, right off of 181 as you're heading north to Pettis. As the uh, Top Cats just finished their performance, the Wildcats leading 28-7 to over the uh, Beeville Trojans. And, Coach, you know, we've seen, you know, the last three weeks. I'm going to go back, you know, Teloso Midway, the Miller game last week or, you know, two weeks ago. Where you, know, you hate to bring it up, but we, we've seen the referees just not control the game. You know, we, these, this is a physical game as it is, and you just don't need a kid possibly, you know, risking getting injury for, you know, something happening after a yeah, whistle blows. You know, so that, that's that's what I'm looking at. I'm, and we talk every 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 game that we're, uh, we're not going to let the officials you know, dictate you know anything, or we're not going to worry about the officials. want to see what we just saw there in the second quarter both teams well, and, you know and in a scrimmage you know just kind of yeah. you know coming together and and uh you can see this starting to take place just like at tm against miller uh where all of a sudden we start getting a bigger lead and then there's frustration on the on the team that's you know behind and all of a sudden you see all this uh, i guess talking yeah, going on and then you get a push here and a late hit there and then all of a sudden 
you know, all hell breaks loose. Exactly right. A couple of scores to pass on to you. We're keeping an eye on the uh, Port Lavaca Alice game. They're in the uh, late in the first quarter. Port Lavaca with a 20 to 16 lead over the Alice Coyotes. Sitting all over Rio Hondo, 49 to zero. Mathis over Orange Grove, 32 to 22. Skidmore taking on Santa Rosa. Skidmore leading that game 29 to 13. Fall City over Iowa Dulce, 42 to zero. That game is in the half. We also have Moody taking on Corpus Christi King. Moody leading that matchup 9-0. West Oso taking on Port Isabel. Port Isabel with a 20-14 lead over West Oso. We have um, Pettis taking on Rungi. Rungi 39-7. Rockport Fulton taking on Robstown. That game is zero. All uh, uh, goose eggs on the board, 0-0. George West 14-7 over Dilly. Those are some scores coming in from around the area. Corpus Christi Miller. Uh, and Teloso Midway, 35-6, to six, Corpus Christi Miller. Those are games going on around South Texas here at Beeville Stadium, 28-7. to seven, Wildcats over the Beeville Trojans. We're going to take a break. You're listening to Cal Allen Wildcat Football on 1360 KKTX and Cal Allen TV. Hey, Sam, give me two minutes. Sam, two minutes, please. Where's it at? Where's he at? You can go to the deck and take a picture for Fishman. I saw that where they were kind of. Hey, congratulations. I saw the middle school undefeated. I'll give you all a chance to talk about that here in a little bit. Good, yeah. good job. We went 29, 2, and 3. As a group? As all 7th graders? All 4th. Or is the whole 7th and 8th grade? 7th and 8th grade together. What, 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 is, what is Gavin? 6th grade? Yeah, he's 6th. He'll be up there next year. Mm. Yeah, my godson. Um, coming up next year. What's his name? Gavin Thomas Sainz. He's a 6th grader now. I think, is he playing for, does Kittigua have a junior league team or something? Mm-hmm. He's playing with them. Chris Kittigua is the little brother. Is it? Okay, well, I need. Is that what's on the helmet? Yes. All right. Welcome back to the halftime show. Coming to you from Beeville, Texas, home of the A.C. Jones Trojans, led by uh, head coach Chris Sosa. No stranger to uh, South Texas. You know, had uh, some time over at uh, Mathis. He had a stint with Al, uh, Alice Coyotes. Came over to Beeville, went over to Medina Valley, now back in Beeville. It's, it's a great coach. His son is also on the coaching staff. He uh, was the uh, inaugural quarterback, I believe, coach for the uh, UTSA Roadrunners. Correct. So now he's uh, now coaching under his dad. But, again, just a great program. They trail Beeville 28-7 to as uh, Wildcats uh, got off to a good start. A couple of turnovers in the first quarter, got the fumble, then the interception by Kittigua. But then Burnett, in, uh, early in the second quarter, 
fumbled the ball, gave Beaver the ball on their own 37-yard line. On a big third down play, Gonzalez on the quarterback sneak, takes it in from one yard out, made it 21-7. Wildcats came right back down the field, connected on a 26-yard touchdown pass from Burnett to Vecchio, and that made it 28-7 as we stand here at halftime. But, Coach, uh, it's been a first half again. One of the things I always emphasize is penalties. You've got to right. eliminate the penalties and turnovers. Tonight, penalties, we've had some questionable calls again. Uh, but the turnover by Burnett, we got to be able to hold on to the ball. You don't want to give the opposing team uh, a free series, and that's kind of what we did, and that's how they got on the board. But statistics are going to be a different thing. Wildcats yeah. pretty much control this game here early on. We had the short field, so I don't see a lot of yards here for the Wildcats, but we'll see what we got. For Cal Allen, they had 10 first downs. They had 113 yards rushing, 78 yards passing for a total of 191 yards. This was shocking. I thought we had more penalties than this. We only had four penalties for 20 yards, but I remember a couple of a couple flags of got flagged off. Flags yeah, got, waved got off. picked off, yeah. yeah. Russian Hinojosa carried the ball eight times for 59 yards and a touchdown. Burnett carried it five times for 35 yards and a touchdown. And Medina carried it three times for 20 yards. Burnett was three of five passing for 78 yards and two touchdowns. Tagle caught one ball for 44 yards and a touchdown. Vecchio caught a ball for 26 yards and a touchdown. And Newell caught a ball for 8 yards. Time possession for Cal Allen was 11 minutes and 25 seconds. For the Beeville Trojans, they had 7 first downs, 24 yards rushing, 71 yards passing for a total of 95 yards. They had no penalties. Rushing, Bearfield carried the ball 4 times for 17 yards. Gonzalez carried it six times for five yards, and and uh, Victor Gonzalez carried it twice for two yards and one touchdown. Gonzalez was five of fifteen passing for seventy-one yards and one interception. Costas caught one ball for forty-five yards, and Gomez caught a ball for seventeen yards. Time possession for Beville was thirteen minutes and thirty-five seconds. You know when you're reading out those halftime scores, ones that just caught me by surprise: the Rockport Robstown. Score was zero zero. Uh, that's Rob Sound must be trying to turn that program around and get it going. They sure are. One thing I want to you know talk about, Coach. Two of the last three games we've held our opponents, uh, you know, to under twenty five yards. You know, Tolosa Midway negative fifteen yards, and then last week against the uh, Alice Coyotes, Alice had sixteen yards of total offense. So Beville tonight in the first half with ninety five yards, uh, and you know they had that one busted play. That they, uh, it was a fourth down play where Gonzalez rolled out. The wide receiver was wide open. That was probably <laughs> 45 yards of that total 71. But right. Still uh, good to uh, you know give something for that defense to go in. Coach Campbell to talk to these kids, get them fired up to come out in the second half. You know, Beaville only had the 24 yards rushes, so you know they've had some success throwing the football. So we'll see in the second half <coughs> what they decide to do. There you go. The Wildcat band on the field getting ready to come out with their Tiger Rad back to their home crowd. The uh, Beeville band uh, waiting for them. I'm trying to see where they're at. I guess they're right here on the sideline. Much smaller band. Again, congratulations to the uh, Cat Island band doing a fantastic job with their performance. We saw that evident tonight. And it's good to see this band growing again, Coach. And you know, it was a four, uh, few years where it was kind of you know, dwindling down, but now you can see we're it's uh, they're, you know reestablishing themselves. Had a state year last year. Had their best year last year. I think they ranked number seven, if I'm correct, eight last year, which wow. is their highest ever for the uh, program. So right. congratulations to, to them. And you can see the show tonight. Just another uh, outstanding performance by the Cal Island Band. The Beeville Band is getting ready to make their way on the field. They got their props coming out. About 14 minutes left to go here before the half. The Beeville Trojan Band getting ready to come on. We have the top ten from around the state. Sub varsity report coming up. We got some great uh, results from our sub varsity teams. Keep it right here on 1360 KKTX and Cal Island TV. We'll be right back after these words. Thank you. 
Our group went undefeated. Yeah. I don't even know what our score is for. No. Oh, God. Barely got this internet to pull this stuff up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Another long week, and yours is getting longer. <laughs> Not looking forward to early morning. Maybe if that's all you had to do, yeah, it'd be different. Welcome back to uh, Callahan Wildcat football. You're going to listen to a little bit of the uh, top ten. Hopefully the uh, internet stays up for me. We get through this. Starting off with the uh, 6A division at number ten is the Allen Eagles. And you have Lake Travis coming in at number nine. North Shore, Westfield, Rockwall Heath at six. Atta Scotia at five. Duncanville, Carroll High School Dragons at three. Katy High School at two. Westlake coming in at number one. 5A Division II, number 10 is at Crosby. You have Alamo Heights sitting there at number 9 again. Montgomery at 8. Texas High School at 7. South Oak Click at 6. Lubbock Cooper. Ennis, Marshall, Lovejoy, and Alito coming in at number 1. 5A Division I. At number 10 is Dripping Springs. You have Longview, Lone Star, Colleyville Heritage. Uh, Veterans Memorial from Corpus at number 6. Paytow, Tascosa. Highland Park, College Station, and Ryan coming in at number one. 4A Division II. At number 10, you have Wimberley. At number nine is Sinton. Then you have Quero, Van, Belleville, China Spring, West Orange Stark, Selena, Gilmer, and Carthage coming in at number one. 4A Division I. Sitting at number 10 is Vider. And then you have La Vega. Cal Allen has moved up two spots back to number eight. Or Hershey. And then Kilgore, Argyle, Melissa, El Campo, Stephenville, and LBJ coming in still at number one. Four A, uh, 3A Division II, we have Abernathy, Canadian, Wascom, Roosevelt, Newton, West Rusk, Holiday, Childress, Gunter, and Franklin High School coming in at number one. 3A Division I is uh, Columbus, Tatum, Lorena High, Grandview, West, Industrial, Mount Vernon, Hallettsville, Brock, and Jim Ned coming in at number one. 2A Division II, we have McCarney, Wellington, Clarendon, Tenaha, Falls City, Stafford, uh, Albany, Winthorst, Munster, and Mart coming in at number one. 2A Division I, Forsan, Coleman, Mason, Beckville, New Deal, Holly, Crawford, Timpson, Shiner, and sitting at number one, staying with it, is uh, Referio coming in at the top. Let's go through some fun schools. 1A Division II, Klondike, Benjamin, Throckmorton, Jayton, Anton, Follett, Balmaria, Richland Springs, Strawn, 
and Motley County Schools coming in at number one. 1A one Division One, Hermley, Ira, Garden City, Sterling City, Spring Lake Earth, Rankin, Water Valley, Abbott High School, Jonesboro, and May coming in at number one. Hmm. A couple of new names in there. Yeah. It's always interesting to call those little bitty schools and then try to figure out where in the heck they're located at. <laughs> <laughs> Always interesting to try to figure out where they're at, start playing with the map and not hearing some of those. Uh, sub varsity reports. I tell you what, uh, this week was a busy week for me. Um, trying to put together some district champion shirts for the uh, junior high kids. Uh, so, scores on some of the, uh, the JV and freshmen I did not get. I'm not sure if you got those guys or not. No. Um, I missed school today. We had a golf tournament going on, so I didn't get to ask my guys that I usually ask to be able to tell me what we did. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we probably were victorious. That's usually the case. Uh, but at the middle school, uh, I'm just uh, I'm glad to announce that uh, this, this season, and it's been a while that it's happened this way, but all four teams, the 7th grade A team, 7th grade B team, 8th grade A team, and 8th grade B team, all district champs this year with the uh, seventh grade B team, uh, undefeated district champs with two ties, and the eighth grade uh, or the seventh grade A team, our guys, uh, we were undefeated as well with only one tie. So the first time in a while where trying to make four shirts for these kiddos for all t all of four teams being district champs. Shoot, that was a good. I mean, it was a good year for the middle school. That's for sure. Definitely did, did real good. Um, we, f we finished off playing, um, I was, who was, I don't even know this week. It was, it was, it was so quick, Flower, Flower Bluff. Bluff, we were out there with the, right off the water blowing at us, that's right. I tell you, it's, we've seen burnt orange with the high school from Alice, and then again here, uh, just kind of going with the colors there. But Flower Bluff, yes, um, I know the uh, eighth grade team didn't have the exact scores, but I want to say they were like uh, 38 to 8, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, B team was uh, probably 24 to 6, something like that. They had a big lead, uh, big victory. Uh, our seventh grade B team was big, 38-16. Uh, uh, and then the A team, we actually had a tough fight, uh, as we usually do with Flower Bluff in the uh, second half, winning, though, 16 to 0 with the shutout. So... Um, again, you know, with the junior high kids coming up eventually here at the high school, we've got uh, four district champions. So not not a, uh, a bad season for those guys. Um, some of us, myself, moving on to our next sport already. Uh, golf today. I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, Marshall Major, one of our uh, my number one guy on the uh, voice team. Uh, shot 77 today. He's leading the tournament. So. Uh, Kudos to that fellow there. He's always done a great job playing, and it was tough today out in the wind. And uh, we'll have our day tomorrow again, starting bright and early at uh, 8 o'clock time uh, over at Gabe Lozano and uh, hopefully looking to bring home some hardware between the boys and the girls. You know, speaking of next sports, I think we've got uh, middle school basketball tryouts starting on Monday. I don't know what time. Early in the morning. Early in the morning. 6.30, 6.45. Somewhere around there, so kids are going to go from football to base to basketball. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who all uh, gets out there and tries their uh, luck at the old thump thump there with the, with the hardwood and the basketball going to town. Uh, I kind of like the sound of the crack of a, a golf ball in that club instead, but uh, and of course, get to be outside and enjoy the weather. You know, it's it's funny how it's 90 degrees until the last day of middle school football, <laughs> and then. A cold front comes in, and it's basketball season. Yep, all of a sudden it changes, and, and uh, of course, golf, finally we get to wear some of our little jackets out there for a little bit. Of course, that's, you know, the bus ride, and get over there for warm-up, and that's about it. Time the sun comes up, it starts heating up a little bit for these kids. I tell you, we're going to take a uh, little break here. We've got about four minutes till the end of half. Uh, Cal Allen's coming back out on the field already, waiting to see uh, Beeville. They should be showing up shortly. Yeah, it's a little bit of walk for these guys. They're probably about a half mile back to uh, their dressing room, so timing's a little bit off. But uh, we'll, we'll take that quick break. You're listening to Wildcat Football on 1360 KKTX. I heard my phone go off.
He throws in like commercials and stuff too. Yeah. He tries to put some things in there. No, there's pizza and there's still some sandwiches there. Y'all co- y'all take a break and I'll cover for a little bit. Yeah, put a hits on. All right, welcome back to the halftime show. I want to thank Coach Mike Brotherton and Coach Medina for bringing us the uh, sub varsity report and the uh, top 10 from around the state. We got to give credit to those young men down at the junior high level working hard. And that's where this program starts. They, uh, you know, they get introduced to Cal Island football at a very young age, but then they start teaching them the offense and they learn it from seventh grade all the way to their senior year. So, again, I want to thank uh, Coach uh, Brotherton and Coach Medina. Congratulations on a fantastic job down at the junior high level. As uh, we have about 18 seconds remaining here in the half, Wildcats with a 28 to 7 lead over the uh, Beeville Trojans. As uh, both teams, uh, both fa- uh, student bodies, should I say, have finished their performances. The Dazzlers, it's Parents' Night, all types of celebrations here at AC Jones. Uh, the Wildcats have made their way onto the field. They're lined up at the 20 yard line to our left. The Beeville Trojans are in the end zone to the west side of the stadium, scoreboard side to our right. Carolina Wildcats run through their run through, smoke machine and all. Beeville Trojans have a inflatable crew on our right-hand side. Impressive Trojan standing about 25 foot tall to our right-hand side. 28 to 7. Wildcats over the Trojans. We'll be back with the opening kickoff of the third quarter. You're listening to Cal Island Wildcat Football on 1360 KKTX and Cal Island TV. It's a lot cooler out there. Yeah, it's a lot cooler. It was two minutes, Sam, two minutes.
Mmm. A delicious 50 cent corn dog from Sonic, America's drive in. Oh, I can't wait to devour this thing. Eduardo! Eduardo, isn't this the best corn dog you ever looked at in your life? I think so too. Mmm, man, this looks delicious. <clears throat> give, give, give me the dog. What, 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 why? Give me the dog! <laughs> I'm sorry, Eduardo, you can't have to no. come with me. I want that dog. No. Yes. Give me no, the dog. It's, it's no, mine. Give me the. Give, give it's me mine. The I bought it. I bought it legally. No. G give me the dog. No. 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 My dog. Sonic. This is how you Sonic. Taking on Santa Rosa, twenty-nine to thirteen. Skidmore with the lead in that matchup. West Oso taking on Port Isabel. That game is at the half. 21 to 20. West Oso leading that matchup. George West over Dilly, 21 to 7. Nixon Smiley taking on Corn City. They're knotted up at 14 apiece. Corpus Christi Miller, 35 to 6. Over Toloso Midway. Rockport Fulton, 27 to 0. They've opened up their lead at halftime mm. over Robstown. Those are some games coming in. Referio, 49 to 0 over Kennedy. Fall City all over uh, Awa Dulce, 54-0. And one more to pass on to you at halftime. Victoria East, 42-7 to over Corpus Christi Ray. Coach, I didn't see well, you before on the Gregory well, Portland game. So what, is it just me or does it seem like there's a lot of lopsided games tonight? There it is. Starting to get late in the season. The team's starting to get that last, trying to find that playoff spot. I guess like last night I'm getting a final on Victoria East. Gregory Portland, 20-17. to that game must have taken place last night, but uh, those are some uh, scores that came in from around the area. I want to thank our sponsors, a &R Septic Services, Jersey Mike's. How about Baytech and Robinson, Gulf Coast Graphics, AOC Auto Parts, BAD, Nolan's Original Poor Boys. How about U.S. Ecology, Integrity Storage, and Jack Taylor Insurance? So many is possible without our sponsors. We would not be able to come at you. So, again, if you hear, uh, go out and support our sponsors as they support us and the games throughout the season. Kicking off for the uh, Beeville Trojans will be number eight, Edward Bracco. He tees it up at the 40-yard line. Trojans will kick right to left on your radio dial or across your TV screen. Bracco, left-footed kicker, high end-over-end -end kick. This one taken at the 13-yard line. Number 21 is Skyler Rubio. Rubio loses his footing but still able to go upfield over the 30-yard line. Rubio finally brought down by number 32, Cameron Vega. Bryce Burnett will bring the Wildcat offense on the field. They'll have their first possession of the third quarter. Wildcats won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So they receive the ball here in the uh, third quarter. Ethan Salinas split wide to our side, to the right side. Vecchio split wide up top. Burnett able to connect with Vecchio right before the half for a touchdown. This time it's going to be a handoff to the running back. Trying to go to the left side. Not much room there for the Wildcat running back. He ran into number 11, Nick Lampkin, left defensive end. That was number 24, Medina, on the carry for the Wildcats. Medina goes off. Vecchio will split wide to the near side. Salinas should be split wide up top. Second down and eight for the Wildcats. Fake to Carpinello. He's wide open. Burnett looking down the Tagle. field has Tagle. Tagle off the hands, unable to bring it in. He was about five yards behind the secondary. Gonzalez may have got a piece of it as it was coming into Tagle's hands. I don't know. Didn't he, uh, look, look, he was wide open for a while. He was. A little late on the throw was Burnett. I mean, it gave Gonzalez some time to cover some ground, but the ball's going to hit the carpet in the third down and seven coming up for the uh, Wildcats. Medina and Tagle in the backfield. Hand off to Medina. Medina's got the 35. He's got the 40. Going to come first across down. the 45, and he's going to have enough for the first down. It's brought down by number seven. That's Bryce Foster. Foster came in the game, leading tackler for the Trojans, and tonight he's had a busy night. He came into the game with 85 tackles. He's got to be over 90. 
Could be getting close to 100. All cats again. Wide out split to each side. Burnett shotgun formation has a running back to his left. Snap on the way. Hand off to the uh, running back trying to go up the middle and Trojans able to make the play at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a half yard on the play for the uh, running back. On the tackle. Carbonello. Once again, number 11, Nick Lampkin, and number four, Trey Martinez. Opening drive of the third quarter, Wildcats with a 28-7 lead. Medina lined up to the right side of Burnett. Option play to the left. Burnett with a quarterback keeper. Burnett has some running room, has a 40, cuts back across the grain. He's going to go. Get He's going to go. Around the corner. He's got one man to block. Salinas with the block. In the 10, 5, end zone. Great job by Salinas. That's the way you throw a block down the field. You just get in the way of the defender. 47-yard touchdown run for Bryce Burnett. Nine minutes, 51 seconds, and the Wildcats take the opening drive. 68 yards for the touchdown, capped off by Burnett on the quarterback keeper. Once Burnett started going to his left on that 19 ops, and I had flashbacks from last week. Snap on the way. King with a kick. This one's strong enough, and through the uprights. 35-7 over the Beeville Trojans. We'll be back on 1360 KKTX. It was 53, right? I was looking at it from it was from the other 47, right? Thank you. 53 yards. I, I wanted to, once I looked at it, I was like, wait a minute, that's 53. Culver again. All right, welcome back. Number 14 is Aiden Culver. He's going to tee it up at the 40 yard line. Culver, senior wide receiver cornerback, now also with some kicking duties. This one. Short kick taken at the 26-yard line, number 22 for the Beeville Trojans. is going to be Hunter Peeltree. He's going to bring it out to about the 30-yard on and 10 with 9.42 remaining here in this third quarter. Like always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Mr. Roy's Fireworks, Big Joe's Tire and Auto, Hicks Family Nissan, Circle 8 Crane Services, LLC, Integrity Storage and Jack Taylor Insurance, Mike Cotton's Barbecue, Scott Taylor and Mia Taylor, and U.S. Ecology. Beeville breaks the huddle. First down and 10. They're going to be spotted at the 34-yard line. They'll stay in the slot T. Gonzalez under center. Turns around, hands it off to the running back coming on the near side. Quickly coming up is Kitagua to make the tackle. Number 25 on the run for the uh, Trojans, Kate Elder. Great job. I'll tell you what, both safeties do a good job by filling, filling that lane right there. I'll tell you, they both come up quick and hard. Three-yard gain on the play for the uh, Trojans. Trailing 35-17. to 17. Came into the uh, game with a 2-1 and one district record. Trying to come up with a win tonight to keep their playoff hopes alive. Pass play from Gonzalez to number 11, Nick Lampkin. Lampkin, who's been playing defensive end on the defensive side, now comes in, makes a nice catch for the uh, Trojans, enough to move the chains. Slowly, as the game goes on, we're seeing more players going both ways for Beeville. Both teams... Carrying just over 30 players, possibly. Looks like Beeville's got about 20 players on their sideline. Both of them 
Some of the uh, smaller schools. Gonzalez dropping back. Pressure. Looking for his wide receiver. Unable to connect. Rogers comes up a little gimpy on that left angle, but looks to be okay. Mm -hmm. Gonzalez just Timing. unable to connect with yeah. his wide receiver. Timing's off. I mean, the receiver is open. Timing was just a little off. Third down play coming up for the Trojans. I apologize. Second down play coming up. First down was picked up by Lampkin. Clock stops with 835. Gonzalez under center. Wildcat defense crowding the line of scrimmage. 25 motions across. Going to be a handoff right up the middle. Pickup of about seven yards on the play going right at the heart of the defense. On the tackle was Is that Bearfield, number no. nine? Yep, I believe is. it is. It is. Trey Bearfield. It's Callaway and uh, Ernest Hinojosa on the tackle for Cal Island. Trying to see how many they've got going both ways. I know it's more than just a couple. Third down play coming up. Third down, we're going to call it four. Gonzalez under center. Wide receiver split to the right. Gonzalez turns around, talks to his running back, Bearfield. Now dropping back, pressure. Nobody, he's got green grass in front of him, but he's got a wide receiver downfield off the fingertips. Gonzalez had nothing but green grass in front of him, Coach. If he takes off, he gets 20, 30 yards easily. Well, and he also had a receiver. The receiver had five yards on our secondary. But, you know, once that ball went in the air, you know, he had to stop and wait for it, and that let our guys, you know, catch up and knock it away. That was number five, Washington, the intended receiver. That was Caleb Washington. Yes. He was able to get behind the secondary a couple of steps. When Gonzalez put it in the air, put some air under it, and that allowed the secondary to close quickly. Fourth down play coming up. Big play for the defense. Gonzalez under center. Again, rolling to the left. He's got some backside pressure. Now going downfield, Kitagua is going to have his second interception of the night. 30-yard line. Trying to catch up with Lampkin, but uh, that pass underthrown, and that allowed Kitagua to make the interception at about the 31-yard line. You know, there's nowhere for Gonzalez to run that time. He might as well have thrown the ball. If it's picked off, well, it's just picked off. But they weren't going to make the first down anyway. Second interception of the night for Kitagua. Seven minutes, 30 seconds. Wildcats will come back onto the field. They'll start this drive on the 31-yard line. Hand off to the uh, running back. I believe that's Gonzalez. I'm sorry, that's Hinojosa, should I say, number 23. Quickly brought down by number 56, Adebe Vasquez. Gain still about four yards on the play. We're going to call it second down and six. Harvey Vasquez is another one going both ways. He's also on the offensive line. Left guard on the offensive line. Left defensive end on defense. Empty backfield for Burnett. Medina now motions across. Fake to Medina. Pressure from the uh, Trojans. Burnett looking run it, downfield. Run it, run it, now run he's it. going to tuck it and run. Burnett. On his feet, trying to get to the inside, cuts back to the middle. Across midfield, about the 48-yard line for the Wildcats. He was trying to direct traffic, telling the receiver to go ahead and take off and go deep. but He found a lot of nice green grass in front of him. Good job. Good job of running. Set the chains. The clock will start. Beville staying in their 4-4-3 defense. Rubio, now the wide receiver split up top. Vecchio to the near side. Handoff will be to Carpinello. Carpinello gets around the outside edge, has a blocker. Now with the stiff arm, and the flag comes out. And I was just looking at it, Coach. I, it was Carpinello did a nice job on the stiff arm, and the man who was blocking, I, I didn't think he was able to – I don't think he made the uh, infraction that's going to be called on him, but it came from the uh, referee on the backside here. It's going to go against Cal Island. They're calling it holding. So after the penalty, 
It's going to bring him back to the original, what I thought would be the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be the 45-yard line, and it'll be they'll replay the down, I believe. First down, and we're going to call it about eight to go. I could have swore that was an eight-yard penalty. Burnett takes to Hinojosa, going across the field, trying to catch up with his wide receiver. I believe that was number four, Cody Newell, the intended receiver, but just off the uh, hands of Newell, kind of led him just a little bit too far. It's going to bring up a second down and seven for the Wildcats. A good job about extending the play as far as Burnett's concerned. I know Newell probably figures he should have caught that ball. He needs to make a better adjustment when the ball goes into the air. All cats break the huddle to the line of scrimmage. Vecchio split wide to the near side. Rubio split wide up top. And off to Medina. Medina waits for his block. Now cuts it upfield. And he's going to get close. across the 40 to about the 39-yard line. It's going to be short by about two yards on the play. It's going to bring up a third down and two for the Wildcats. Clock rolling, five minutes, 29 seconds. Last game of October, ninth game of the season. Only one remains after tonight. Yeah, it's a big one. Vecchio split wide up top. Rubio now wide receiver in front of us. Not for the first down. Able to slide his way, kind of shifted his body sideways there to pick up the first down about the 36-yard line. We should start seeing Epi Hinojosa come back into the game. Here comes Epi, as you called it. Number 23 will check in. Tagle, number 33, checks out. Four minutes, 48 seconds here in the uh, third quarter. Wildcats took the opening drive. 68 yards, kept off by a 53-yard run by their quarterback. Snap on the way, Burnett. Rolling to his left, looking downfield. Got a man. Trying to hit his man. I believe that's Rubio, and it's uh -huh. going to go off the hands. Come back and get it. Of number 21, Rubio. And it's going to fall on the carpet, incomplete. Rubio really should have come back and gotten that ball. It acted like a, a back shoulder throw. What is this? Flag. I'm trying to find. Where's the flag at? Nobody's up. Line judge surprising right in front of the Beeville bench. Right. And this one's a big one. I'm not sure what they're calling here. It's going to bring us back to the 46-yard line. We'll wait for the referee to give the signal. And no signal from the referee. Well, if we don't get them on touchdowns, was it holding, Coach? Holding against the Wildcats. First down and 20. Fake option. Burnett keeps it. Burnett launching forward, and he'll pick up nine yards on the uh, play. Gets about half of it back right there. That's where they spot it. Looks like eight to nine yards. Going to spot it at the 38-yard line. So it is about an eight-yard gain. Second down and 12. A little bit more manageable play for the Wildcats. Bryce, brought down by Bryce Foster, number seven. Salinas split to the near side. Vecchio split wide up top. Hand off to number 23, Hinojosa. Hinojosa has some room. Hinojosa has green grass in front of him. One man left, and he's going to get by him. 38-yard touchdown run by Epi Hinojosa. Looking for yellow flags, looking for laundry. <laughs> More importantly, no flags. Nothing on the carpet. So good run there by Epi Hinojosa. Takes it into the end zone with three minutes and 44 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Point after coming up, and I believe that's going to be number 14, Aiden Culver. Salinas waits for the snap. Snap on the way. Culver with a strong kick. Wide left, though, not going to make it through the uprights. Three minutes and 44 seconds. Cal Allen, 41, Beeville, 7. We'll be back three. on 1360 KKTX and Cal Allen TV.
This quarter's player profile is brought to you by Oh Goody Designs and Events. All right, Rich, we got one zero, top of the six. Two thirds of the game complete. This score runs in bunches, though. Yep. You're a crooked number team. Three, five, or seven runs. Uh oh. Jordan King with a kick. High end over end kick. Washington takes it at about the 15. Trying to go upfield, gets across the 20 to about the 26-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Waiting for the uh, spot from the officials. Three minutes and 33, 36 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. 38-yard touchdown run by number 23, Epi Hinojosa. Gives the Wildcats a 41-7 lead. Beaver will take over first down and 10 at the 20, call it the 28-yard line. See if they decide to run the ball a little bit more. They're quick to the line once again. Referee slowing things down. Referee's not ready. Now he sets. We are ready. Gonzalez. Under center for the uh, Trojans. Hard snap count. Handoff to Bearfield. I believe that's Bearfield. Boy, he took a shot. We well, ran right into Birch and Callaway. That was Bearfield on the carry. About a two-yard game, but Bearfield took the shot, as we mentioned, from Callaway. Right as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Bryce Gomez, number six, back in for the Trojans. Second down, we're going to call it eight to go. Again, quick to the line of scrimmage. Hand off to the uh, running back, number 11. I think that's Lampkin now taking over in the backfield. <laughs> Callaway, Grant Taylor, Logan Koval. You run into those three, you're not going to get many yards. Lampkin looking over to the sideline saying, don't give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Lampkin's been all over the field. He's been in the backfield. He's been a wide out. We've seen him on the uh, defensive side of the ball. You know, Alice has been satisfied with running, trying to run the football here, even though they haven't had a whole lot of success. But they are running time off the clock. Third down and a long six. See if they try to get a first down here. Gonzalez. Pass. Thanks. Trying to set up the screen, screen pass. This one's going to be intercepted, and it's going to go to the house. That's Number 25. Isaiah Reyna. <laughs> Is Isaiah Reyna, and is that about a 20-yard run, Coach? I didn't see where he picked it off. 25, 25-yard 25 interception return by number 25, Isaiah Reyna. Boy, that screen was set up, but Reyna played it perfectly. Golly. I know Beville's trying to get into the game, but they can't outsmart themselves. Point after coming up, Jordan King will come back in for the point after. They missed the last one. Wide left. Snap on the way. King with the kick. This one strong enough through the uprights. Two minutes, eight seconds. Wildcats 48, Trojans 7. We'll be back on 1360 KKTX and Cal Island TV. We still got a whole quarter left. It's 9.25. In more ways than one.
Is that appropriate? I don't think so. Can't be. Jordan King from the 40. This one, a nice kick. This one's going to bounce. Picked up by Beville inside the five-yard line. Looked like he stepped out of bounds at the seven. Washington cuts up field, but will be bounds at the 15. It looked like Washington was real close to that out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. Run out of bounds by number 22, Alex Kittigua, number 44, Colton Callaway. So defense will come back onto the field. Wildcats, three interceptions tonight. Two by Kittigua, one by Reyna. Have the fumble recovery. Turnover in their advantage tonight. They've only turned it over once on the uh, Burnett fumble. First down and 10, Beville. Ball at the 31-yard line. Gonzalez rolls to his right. Trying to hit his wide receiver on the far sideline, and he able, is able to connect. I believe that's 28 on the reception. Jaime Del Bosque for the uh, Trojans. Uh, completed pass will bring it out to the 26 enough for the uh, first down for the uh, Trojans. Cal Allen playing man cover two in the secondary motion. Trojans. Now they're going to bring them out. Man up. Fake to Bearfield. Now they'll throw it out in the flat to number six, Colin Gomez. Gomez knocked out of bounds. Some of the Beville fans not happy with the uh, tackle out of bounds by Wood. We're going to rule that he was out. Danaher coming out. Yelling at his players, wanting to take control of the emotions here in this game. And good, good call there by Danaher. Five-yard gain on the play. Second down and five from the 31. Trojans again. Four wide receivers. Gonzalez mm -hmm. takes a snap and the ball's on the ground. Should have been legal procedures. Lewis snapped it early. Bearfield, number nine, able to fall on the ball. They're going to lose about four yards in the play. He's going to bring up third down and nine for the uh, Trojans. And a quick third quarter. Under a minute to play here in the third quarter. Coming to you from Beeville Stadium, home of the A.C. Jones Trojans. Beeville trailing 48-7 to seven to your Wildcats. Two by two set, gun right. Take the handoff. Gonzalez puts it on the carpet again. I think we may have come up with this time, and we do. Number 35 for Cal Allen. Ernest That's Ernest Tenahosa, the nose guard. And Beville continues with the mistakes. It's really costing them here in this game. Well, the just gives the Cal Allen Wildcats a short distance to go, 22 yards for a touchdown. Fumble by Hinojosa. 39 seconds left for the third quarter. Recovered by Hinojosa, should I say. Number 35 recovers it. So the Wildcat offense comes on the field, and what's we'll have to wait and see is Burnett. Nope, Burnett's out. I was just looking. Salinas. It's going to be Salinas taking over for quarterback for the Wildcats. Where's number one on his back? Now you <laughs> ain't even set yet. The line judge from across the field. Some, he's not made friends with someone over there, Coach. Wildcats came up to the line of scrimmage. We're trying to set. They never really even got to the line, and the field judge called a false start. Salinas, under center. He'll turn around. He hands it off. That's number 30 for the uh, Wildcats. Christian, is that? Isaiah Sanchez. Yeah, In 40. It? You're right, number 40, Isaiah Sanchez. I saw the zero. See, we've got all new. That's a whole new team in there. These are all backups now. Carpinello also coming in. 18 seconds. I believe that was the last play. 
of the uh, third they, quarter. They should get it off. Salinas counting players. Okay. Now he's going to head to the sideline. We've played 36 minutes from A.C. Jones. Cal Allen, 48. Beville, 7. We'll be back on Cal Allen TV at 1360 KKTX. 1953 Nolan's Restaurant has been Corpus Christi's favorite place for lunch. Delicious food at great prices. What better place to have lunch than a local restaurant that's been voted number one. Best of the best chicken fried steak. Best of the best barbecue. Best of the best catfish. Best of the best sandwiches. And the best of the best lunch. And try our fried Texas Gulf shrimp. So next time you're hungry, stop by Nolan's Restaurant at our new location in the Park Del Plaza Shopping Center or one of our other convenient restaurants at Staples in Yorktown or in Cal Allen. Nolan's Restaurant, the place for lunch. That's what I'm saying. That's and you know what we're doing. Yeah, you know we've already pulled out our starters. Right. All right, welcome back. Ethan Salinas under center for the Wildcats. A little toss sweep to number 40 going around the right side. Flag coming out from the uh, side judge Touchdown. here. And he's going to walk it into the end zone on the right side. Untouched number 40 is Isaiah Sanchez. We'll wait for the uh, penalty. Came out from the uh, line judge right here in front of the uh, Trojans. Not going to be a false start if it was a false start. Offsides against the Beeville Trojans. We do have a player down. They're, they're going to have to help off the field. Looks like he's able to walk off under his own power. But a 31-yard touchdown run by number 40. Isai Sanchez gives the Wildcats a 54-7 to lead with a point after coming up. Good run by Isai. He had that ripper come up in his face. He cut it up field. Then he cut it back out, found plenty of daylight. Point after coming up, I believe Culver will make another attempt. First play of the third, I'm sorry, the fourth quarter. 11 seconds came off the clock. Culver tells uh, Salinas he's ready. Kick on the way, another strong kick. But this one just kind of hooking it to the left. Wide left, 11.49 left. Cal Allen, 54-7 to seven over the uh, Beeville Trojans. We'll be back on 1360 KKTX. This quarter's player profile is brought to you by O oh Goody Designs and Events. Isaiah. Isaiah Sanchez. Isaiah. He, he, <laughs> it's Isaiah. I think it's I S A I. Got, they got him listed as Y S A I H. Well, he plays baseball, and we call him Esai. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe we're calling him the wrong name. Jordan King. High end over end kick from the 40. Went through his hands. Through the hands of the return man, Joshua Arroyos. Picks it up. Ball Ball's comes loose. loose. That's a touchdown. He's down. The referee. Pointed at the ground immediately, and the Trojans get a break. How nice. 11 minutes and 39 seconds left in this game. That ball went over the head of Arroyos, muffed it, and luckily the Trojans will retain possession. The referee signaling that he was down, and the Trojans will maintain possession. They are at the, uh, what is that, Coach, 10-yard Ten Ten yard line? line. The football past the 10-yard line. Defense will try to make a stop. Again, we apologize. No crowd mic tonight, so it sounds like we're in a box. Spotted at about the 11-yard line. Try the uh, 
handoff up the middle, but the uh, front line right there to make the stop. Callaway, 74 for the, uh, Aiden Hinojosa. All in on the tackle. Other host of Wildcats there to make the play. Logan Callaway. And, I mean, Logan Koval was also there. Might start seeing some new numbers on defense. Gonzalez still at corner. Wood on the opposite side of the field. Rodgers and Kitagua are your safeties. Gonzalez takes a snap, rolling to his left, going downfield, has a man. This one might be picked off. Gonzalez. It is. That's going to be the fourth interception of the night for the Wildcats. Picked off by Gonzalez. He wants to get in on the action. And it's going to be picked off at the 47-yard line of the Trojans. The Trojans have had on their last two possessions, this is the third possession in a row, they've had two interceptions and a fumble on their last three possessions. You know, that was a poor effort by the Beeville receiver. He should have come back at least trying to come back and get that ball or knock it away. First down and 10 for uh, Salinas. They're going to start this drive at the 47. Salinas on the quarterback keeper. Salinas on the right side. Makes a move. Spins around. Lunges forward. He'll be brought down at the 39. Pick up about eight yards. Good job. Does that bootleg run off of the 49 sweep. Gain of eight yards on the play. We'll call it second down and two. Salinas in the backfield. Rubio comes across. This time it's going to be a sweep. I believe that's Sanchez again. Sanchez has a blocker. Cuts it upfield. Sanchez down the sideline. Sanchez looking for the second touchdown of the night. Sanchez will take it into the end zone. 39-yard touchdown run. For number 40, second touchdown, great run by Sanchez, and he wanted it on the action, and he's right back in it. That's going to do it for some of the Beeville faithful. Looks like they're going to go home a little bit early. And again, let's remind you, the Wildcats took out their starters late in the third quarter. This is the backup quarterback, backup line, and the backup running back. So a whole new squad has checked in the game for the Wildcats. Wildcats going for two points. Salinas hit and brought down in the backfield. Point after unsuccessful. Wildcats 60, Beeville 7. We'll be back. Sonic, America's Drive-In is the fast food restaurant that isn't that far from the school that has the best foods out there. If you need a place to go and eat, go to Sonic, America's Drive-In. I don't think he's All right, welcome back. Jordan King from the 40. High, deep kick. This one taken at the 12-yard line by the return man for the Beeville Trojans, sidestepping, waiting for a block, still on his feet, finally brought down over the 30-yard uh, line. And kind of lackadaisical on that one, Coach. Just kind of waited, kind of stepped around. Wasn't a really you – know, didn't just go upfield on that. They uh, did a nice, nice job of like finding what? the hole and picking yeah. up some yards. Looked like at first he wasn't sure where to go, but I guess that hole finally opened up for him. Be first down and ten for the uh, Trojans at the 33-yard line. 
nine minutes and 34 seconds remaining in this game. Wildcats with a commanding 60 to seven lead. Handoff to the running back, Christian Gonzalez coming up to make the tackle along with number 64 for the uh, Trojans. That's Jordan King. 64 Jordan King for the uh, Wildcats right there to make the tackle. Also there, number 74, Aiden Hinojosa. Also checking in, 72 is Jackson Clark on the front line. Linebackers, number 20, that's Cody Vecchio. 25 at the uh, on the right side, that's Isaiah Reyna. He had the interception on the last play. 34, Sean Wolf. The other Solid inside dropping linebacker. back. Pressure as he goes upfield. Is this one going to be intercepted? Kittaqua. He got it. Did he get it? He got it. I believe he did. That's his third. 22, Alex Kittaqua. Looking like. When, when does Beville stop throwing the ball? I don't know. Looking like digs from the Dallas Cowboys are just picking him out of the air. Eight minutes, 43 seconds. And again, Coach, that's a fourth consecutive turnover for the uh, Beeville Trojans. They just continue to try to go downfield. And that time, again, Kitagua with the interception. Salinas will bring the Wildcats back on the field. Coach, I don't know what else you can do. You got your ball on the ground. Wildcats on the quarterback exchange, Salinas pounces on it. So it'll be second down for the uh, Wildcats. Coach, you know, Beville is looking to try to fight for a playoff spot, trying to come up with a win tonight, but 60-7 to seven is not the way you want to no, have your game, the result of the game here. Salinas turns around. Is that Sanchez again? Sanchez on the right side. Sanchez picks up the two we lost. Looks like he picks up a gain of six, so it'll be third down and four. You know, in defense of uh, Ethan Salinas and Jace Hostet over the center, you know, how many reps do they really get, you know, during the week? Cal Allen will improve to 4-0 and in district play. Beeville will drop to two and two. Let's see who Beeville wraps up their season with. Wildcats will host Port Lavaca next week. That'll be in Cal Allen at Field Dan and her field. And Beeville has to travel to Corpus to take on the Miller Bucks. Well, their season doesn't get any easier after tonight. Mm. Fourth down and two coming up. Birch, number 41, checks in. Look for a quick kick, rugby style from number 41. Clock rolling right at the uh, seven-minute mark. 77, Cole Hobbs trying to get the offense to come up to the line of scrimmage. Play clock down Be to eight. Bevo trying to get somebody deep. They don't want this ball to roll the five-yard line. Snap on the way, Birch. With a high end over end kick. Good this kick. one's going to go over the head of number Good 21. Kick. Great kick. And it's going to go inside the five yard line, and that's where it'll be down by the Wildcats. Great kick by William Birch. Pins Beeville inside the five yard line. Everything, Tough place to start the drive. Everything going good for the Wildcats right now. First down and 10. Ball's going to be, they're going to spot it. At the uh, five-yard line, I'd like to thank our sponsors. How about Bill Miller's Barbecue, NEC Co-op, Mike Shaw Toyota, AOC Auto Parts, Cameron Commercial and Industrial, all proud sponsors of Wildcat football. Trojans saw that there was a void on the front line by the Wildcats. It was a player late to come on the field, Coach. So they handed it off to their big running back, number nine, Bearfield. He picks up about six yards on the play, second down and four. You know, that's just taking advantage, you know, taking what, you, what they give you. 
We let Chris Sosa's substituting plays in through their wide receivers or tight ends. Second down, we're going to call it four to go. Gonzalez under center. Hands it off. Big hole on the right side. Running back on the loose. That's Lampkin. Lampkin out over the 35. That's the biggest run of the night for the Beeville Trojan running backs. Number 11 is Nick Lampkin, senior, 5'11". Also the starting outside linebacker. Clock approaching the five-minute mark. Changes on the front line for the Wildcats. Your secondary remains the same. Gonzalez under center brings the uh, Trojans to the line of scrimmage. A little trap play for the uh, Trojans. This time read beautifully by the Wildcats. Gain of maybe two yards on the play. We'll see where they spot it. Umpire is going to spot it right over the 36-yard uh, line. So we'll give them a two-yard gain on the play. Cody Vecchio and Sean Wolf on the tackle for the Cal Allen Wildcats. Second down and eight. Gonzalez. Brings the uh, Trojans to the line of scrimmage. Hand off to Lampkin. Lampkin trying to go upfield. Lampkin hit. Grant on the tackle for the Wildcats along with number 34 coming up and filling that hole nicely. That's Sean Wolf for the Wildcats. Third down, we're going to call it four to go. A long four. Trojans, seven points on the board tonight, courtesy of the fumble by Burnett. Had the uh, short field. Other than that, they have not had much going tonight. They've turned the ball over numerous times. It should have been a false start. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they called it this late in the game, and you really almost shouldn't when you're leading by 60-7. to seven. Surprised they stopped the clock. Where's the clock operator? <laughs> need to have a talk with that guy. Clock stops on the penalty. Not Referee sure. should wind it back up. There it is. Not sure where the uh, officiating crew's out of. I think it's one of those games where you just go UIL and. Well, it's a district game. You know, normally you would think it's they're out of corpus, but again, just don't recognize any no. of these fellas. Third down and nine. Bearfield ships to the left side of Gonzalez. Shotgun formation. Snap on the way. Gonzalez dropping it off in the flat to number twenty-eight. Makes a catch, but quickly going to be brought down by Gonzalez along with number three, Brody Rogers. After a gain of about six yards on the play, we'll see where they spot it at the 41. Nice little catch and run by Jaime Del Bosque. On the receiving end from Gonzalez. Fourth down play coming up for the uh, Trojans. Trying to keep a drive going. The Last four have been turned over on interceptions and fumbles. Gonzalez looks to the sideline. Now he's going to drop back to punt. Drops back to the 30. Right-footed punter gets a booming punt. This one's going to bounce at the 25. Rolls inside the 20 now into the 15, which is going to roll down at about the 12-yard line. Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, County Commission Robert Hernandez, Orthopedic Center of Corpus Christi, Grande Communications, Generator Super Center of Corpus Christi, Chick-fil-A, H&S Constructs Incorporated, Baytech and Robinson, LLP, Cameron Commercial and Industrial, Clayburg Bank of North America, Connie Kohlenberg Wise, Wells Fargo Advisors, AOC Auto Parts, and Southwind Public Adjusters. Salinas brings the Wildcats back on the field. First down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Turns around, hands it off. Running back going on the right side. He'll pick up about four yards on the play. Brought down by the defense of the uh, Trojans. Not sure. Is that Luke Medina? Luke Medina on the carry. 
I'm just Pick up about five time. yards. Wow. Be second and five. Two minutes remaining in this game. Sanchez in the backfield. Salinas under center. Turns around, hands it to Carpinello. Carpinello hit immediately as he took the handoff. I mean, he was decked by number 54, Eduardo Mendez. Carpinello's going to learn not to stop and dance and get run over. He's going to learn to cut one way or the other and just get as many yards as he can. He was hit by a Mack truck that time. One minute, 25 seconds. Wildcats looking to close out this game. Salinas under center. Might be maybe two more plays left in this game. Sanchez takes it upfield, and he's going to pick up about three yards, a fourth down play coming up. It's going to take us under a minute left in this ball game. So it looks like Birch will come back on the field again. Washington, number five, will drop back. 30 seconds on the play clock, 53 on the scoreboard, so about 22 seconds they, separate the yeah, two clocks. They can wait till almost. Not at this point, you almost take it down to one second and – you take time a timeout and just uh, punt it away. 13 seconds on the play clock. Snap on the way. Birch, right-footed kicker. High, nice kick. This one, Washington again, mops it. Picked up by Cal Allen, and that's Skyler Rubio. And that's going to close this game out, Coach. Another fumble by the Beeville Trojans. The Wildcats will be able to set up in victory formation. And close out this game. Tell you what, a lot, lot of little mistakes. You know, could have been, you know, could have been a different game. Twenty-one seconds on the muffed punt by Washington gives the Wildcats the ball back. They're going to spot it. What is that? The forty? Trying to see where they're going to spot 43. it. Forty-three, forty-four, forty-three. Where it looks like forty-four yard line. And the Wildcats will be able to line up in their victory formation and close out this game. 21 seconds remaining. Salinas take the snap. He'll take an E. And that's going to close out this game. Wildcats 60, Beville Trojans 7. We'll be back with the postgame show on Cal Allen TV and 1360 KKTX.